Good morning, friends, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to Tabletop Tonight, the morning mix edition. It is 8 a.m. right on the dot here. Well, actually, 8.05 a.m. right on the dot here on the West Coast. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Ruel Gaviola, and I play board games here on Twitch and elsewhere on the Internet. And today, do something a little different. I wanted to play Your Town. Uh, this is a game, a uh, graphic novel adventure from Van Ryder Games, who have sponsored this episode. They have actually been a longtime sponsor with us, and I want to shout out to AJ and the team there um, for believing in us early on, like right off the bat, like last year, and they sponsored us for many, 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 many episodes. And I wanted to shout them out and share your town with y'all because they have a Kickstarter going on right now. It just launched. They have a new series of these books. Uh, that are on Kickstarter right now. Uh, let me put that into there. Uh, yeah, you can check out the link I just dropped in the chat. You can check out the new Kickstarter. It's already been fully funded a couple of times over, and uh, they have new books. Uh, these are graphic novel adventures. They are graphic novels, but they're games. You're going to play uh, a game, and I'm going to play this one with y'all in chat. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I don't want to spoil it, but I want to give y'all a good flavor of what you will get uh, in uh, a graphic novel adventure. This one's really cool. I have not played this one. I have, I've had this for a little while now, but it's been sitting on my shelf and I wanted to save it for a special occasion, which is today. So thank you for joining me. We're going to talk about this in just a little bit. I've also got a thing that um, I want to do called What's in the Bag. And What's in the Bag is where I'm just going to look in either my game bag or my backpack, or in this case, my little Quiver Time uh, Bolt and show you all what games I have in there. And um, Dead Last Again, this is what I was talking about last night. I... You know, I'll show it to you right now. I, I can't even wait. I'm excited. You, you, my friend, gave me um, uh, a, this really cool uh, picture uh, of, painted by an artist. Um, and it was a Filipino flag, but done with a bunch of uh, things that were based in L.A., which I, you know, I absolutely loved and I appreciate. I used to have it up here on the shelves, but I, have, I, I need to find a frame. I wanted to find a frame to actually put it on, on the wall, but included in that gift that you gave me, the artist included some stickers. And this is what I was alluding to last night. Those stickers are on my Quiver Bolt. So uh, this is this one here is a replica of what um, the artist had painted. It was like a like almost like a postcard size thing. And I want to get it in a frame. And I love this. Uh, they also include this one of LA. And you know, I'll, I'll show it a little more later, but uh, it's if you look up close, it's got these really cool um, uh, shout outs to LA, different um, monuments and different uh, points of interest. Really, really feel like the Watts Towers, stuff like that. So that is compliments of my friend, Dead Last Again. Thank you so much, uh, my friend. We'll, we'll look at this later. That's going to be the, the second half of this show. Um, I'm going on, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to be on for about an hour or so. Um, I believe the Brothers Murph are going to stream at nine. I, I know they've been doing like Thursdays, um, two, two games a night or one game in the morning one game at night, and I, I sort of wanted to get up early, you know, play this with y'all, and then we could raid the Brother Smurf, and then I'm going to go have my second breakfast. I had my first breakfast, it was just a bowl of cereal, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not really that um, full anymore, but thank you again for hanging out. I want to shout out everyone in the chat. Uh, I saw Slackfish was in the first in here first, as always. Thank you, Slackfish. I hope your um, meeting right now is going well. Uh, Vault Hunter Argus, good morning. Good to see you on here, friend. Um, let's see. Oh, me hammer time. Resubscribe. Thank you. Me hammer time. If you're watching right now, thank you for subscribing six months. Uh, it's awesome. I, I'm always blown away seeing all these subscriptions going through the year. Like Slackfish, uh, just resubscribe for like 12 or 13 months. It's, it's really so cool to see how far we've come. And, you know, I learn things new every day. Um, trying to get better at streaming and doing videos and podcasts and everything else. It's part of the process, as they say. And I just noticed that my shirt is sort of wrinkly. This this was fresh out of the wash. I, I thought I ironed it, but I obviously I didn't. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Good morning to Pentry Games. Thank you for joining us, Pentry Games. And James Brazil, thank you, James. It was always good to see you all here. Uh, Pentry's at 11 a.m. there. Yeah, East Coasters. Um, hopefully you're about to take your lunch break. Um, Lavender has made an appearance. A nice shirt. Thank you. Yeah, this one was compliments of Lauren. Uh, my uh, my stepdaughter Lauren, uh, this uh, organization Lika, is <clears throat> oh, gosh I don't want to say find it on the internet. Um, the, it's an organization 
based here in Los Angeles, I believe, or Southern California. Um, but anyways, uh, was it an organ? Oh, gosh, now it might be a restaurant. Oh my God. <laughs> anyways, thanks to Lauren for giving me this great shirt. It's a hollow, hollow shirt. One of my favorite desserts of all time. It's a Filipino based dessert. Um, it's got all the stuff. It's like, um, think of like the ultimate, like Sunday. It's got all kinds of good stuff in there. Uh, let's see. Um, so good to see everyone in here. Risa Rodi. Hi, good morning, Risa. I hope you're doing well. And Frank, good morning, Frank, and congratulations on the Isle of Cats. I believe the campaign is over. That campaign was amazing. Folks, if you if you haven't seen Isle of Cats raised almost like in US dollars, 1.3 million, which blew my mind. Just amazing campaign. Um, Cyprus, I'm working on a thing, but my 8 a.m. consultation is blocked out my calendar. At least I won't get pulled into work. Oh, great. Uh, Corthy, good morning. Good to see you here. <coughs> So again, we're gonna, I'll jump right into it pretty soon here. Uh, Your Town from Van Ryder Games. I'm going to be sharing it with y'all and um, you know, feel free to chime in. Um, I, I'll, I'll read and there's gonna be decisions to be made. Some of them are pretty straightforward. Others, you're, you're gonna have a really interesting choice. But what's cool about Your Town, so it's, you know, it's got that whole like Western theme motif. You were like, you know, the person with no name just sort of walking into town and you're going to try to, you know, find work and maybe you'll do this, maybe you'll do that. But you're eventually going to build up this town. It is, it's called your town for a reason. And the rules are here, but you'll, you'll learn the rules as you go along as well. But there are, on the back pages here, you have your ledger, which is you're going to keep track of, it's basically your character sheet, if you're familiar with um, RPGs. You have your building registries. You're going to build buildings in here. And then here's the map. Now, of course, I don't like to write in these. So on the Van Ryder website, uh, you can print these out. I just printed them on my little black and white uh, laser printer. So I have the building registry, my ledger. Um, I think I, yeah, I did print out the map. Uh, here's some more of the buildings. So as you uh, certain buildings, you're going to like tick off uh, certain accomplishments. Here's the map, and I'll share the map when we, there's a, there are certain parts I believe where we're just gonna have to con consult the map and figure out where to go. Um, I also printed out uh, some of the reminders uh, as far as like building and town management. And um, there's also some like events, I believe. This is sort of cool too. This one I wanna print in color and laminate actually. This is the Your Town um, bookmark. So you would cut this here. I, I think I wanna print it in color, but this has all of your stats on it. And as you're reading, you know, as you're going through the book, you can put your bookmark in there, save your place, and have all your stats uh, ready to go. Mom Gamer 101 is in the house. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning to you. Um, oh, no, I don't have any of these. Are the Kickstarter? Yeah, oh, the Kickstarter, I'll drop it one more time. They're being funded. They've been fully funded right now. They're in there, and you can get the new series of books, which I believe is season four or series four, but they have all the old ones as, as well. And this is... This might be, I think, the second series. I, I don't remember. Um, it, it, it does say one player. Yeah, it's a solo thing, right? But we're playing together in chat. Uh, ages 14 and up. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like younger than that. Again, it depends on their reading level. Um, could, could definitely get into this. Um, yeah, the current Kickstarter. Season 4. Thank you, Vault. Yeah, um, I'm still rubbing the sleep out of my eyes. Sorry, folks. I'm, I'm always up by this time, but... I, I never stream this early. I've only streamed this early, like, I think once or twice before. Uh, so pardon me if I'm a little groggy at times. But uh, again, thank you for joining me. This is an early start for me for streaming. Um, and I'm getting uh, email messages right now, which I forgot to turn off my phone because I don't want to do any work right now. And <clears throat> okay, what are we doing here? Okay, I just got a message here. I'm you know, hopefully shut off these notifications. Uh, we're going to play Your Town. I would you, I have them, but never had the chance to go through them. I should, yeah, Mom Gamer 101. So I'm going to, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to um, do like, maybe we'll do like 20, 30 minutes. Just hang out, casually do this. You can like do the things over because there's different paths. And then apparently you're going to be, you know, building these buildings. And I think there's different decisions you can make to affect what you build. Uh, Frank says, would you say these are heavily on the game side, more like a story with decision or it's 50, 50. I'm curious whether a new gamer book lover would enjoy them. Yeah, this is, um, Frank, that's a great question. 
I feel like this is leaning more towards the gamer side just because this is the rules. The intro rules are here, talking about your ledger and what buildings you're um, going to construct. And you're going to, um, you have to ramp up, you have to like add ammo to your character because of obviously there's going to be baddies that you have to take care of. So it, I have not gone through this one. I'm assuming it's going to be a little more gamer side. I played, what was the one I played? I think I played the one with a werewolf. I forgot the name of that one, but I think that one was more gamery. I mean, there's a really nice narrative to these, but there are like a lot of gamer, uh, gamer style decisions that you have to make. Um, now again, that could be different in the new uh, season, uh, series four that's on Kickstarter now. I'm not really sure. Uh, actually, that's much more gaming than I expected. Perhaps good for yeah, and that's <clears throat> you know who I I heard about these through our uh, everyone's friend uh, Suzanne Sheldon. Uh, she had posted on Twitter years ago about she had, I, I think she was like going to Gen Con or something, and on the flight she had one of these books and. It, you know, you see her like with the book and then like she had her character sheet and everything. Oh, it was, I was like, oh, I was so intrigued and sure enough ordered this, ordered the, um, I got the, uh, the werewolf one. And there's another one, I think, but I might, I don't know if I have that one anymore. I have to check. Yeah, Lou, Lou, Lou Garou. Yeah, Loup, Loup Garou. And I believe that's the French for Lou Garou. Uh, I'm not, my French is terrible. Um, so yeah, I believe it's something to do with werewolves and stuff, which is really neat. Let's get into this. I'm going to switch over here so you can get a closer look at it. Hey, I got my pencil ready. Here's the book. Here's the character sheets. Um, so here's the rules. I'm going to get my character sheet or my ledger. We'll get that ready. Actually, we'll have the map ready too. There's the map. Um, take a closer look at the ledger. Uh, so here you can see you have your bank account, uh, notes, monthly income, population. So right now, I know this, I read this at the start. The population of your town is five. Okay, it's a very small town. So you're gonna keep track of the population. And of course, as your town becomes more populous, you're gonna to need to feed them, just like <laughs> little flashes of Agricola here, right? Uh, so right now the population is five, and then we're gonna to have to find ways to sustain our um, little town here. Uh, there's a few different translations, but the most common is werewolf. Thank you. Feel like I saw Monique Game Freak go play. Oh, okay, yeah, Monique probably did play this uh, one of these. So here it is, your town from Van Ryder Games. Uh, your choices, your adventure, your story. Right. These are graphic novel adventures. Uh, the rules here. Um, we're we're just gonna we're gonna jump into play, and um, we will, we shall talk about the rules as they pop up. Again, I'm not gonna play the entire thing because I, I want y'all to uh, just get a really nice feel for this. And if you're interested, uh, back the Kickstarter or find the copies of this on the Van Ryder website. Get a little close up here. So to start the adventure, turn the page, make your way to your town, go to page two. What we have here, really, uh, Cool Western motif. You know, I, I look at these scenes, I immediately think of one of my favorite Westerns of all time, uh, The Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood and Gene Hackman. So anyways, your town, population five. So I did, I did sneak a little peek, and so I knew it was population five. So your ledger is going to have population five on it. Uh, we have uh, this, this old guy smoking a pipe. Here we are. Making our way through the town next to the saloon. Okay. So we're getting our horse up here. Old guy's watching us. Our pistol at hand. Five dollars. That's a lot of money back then, right? Let's check out the saloon. Our horse is going to let our horse to water. There's the barkeep. And here we are. Everyone, if y'all can whistle the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll, I'll let y'all do that. I, I can't. I can whistle, but I can't whistle that tune. Something like that. There's the old man spitting in his cup. What will it be, stranger? Whiskey, please. What was the sound for glug glug glug? I believe is the sound. I need work. Do you know where I can find a job around these parts? All the businessmen in town are in this room here, my good man. You need only pick your trade. So here we are, first decision of the game. We have 167. So there's going to be, if you can 
if we look up here, there's different um, numbers for all the different panels. And we're going to go to this panel depending on what we do. It looks like we have 167, 323, and 20. So 20, um, it looks like a, a, probably like a, a minor. 323, that looks like a, oh, okay, probably a mortician. Yeah, these look like little coffins. He's got the mortician hat. And this guy's got to be a gunslinger, right? The man in black. Uh, gunslinger, he's got a couple of pistols right there. What do y'all think? Should we do 167, 323, or 20? What do y'all agree um, I see in chat we will go with? Y'all want to, uh, Slivers is in the house. Hello, Slivers. Hey, you've spent some bits. We got an early morning appearance of, whoa, what did I just do? I pressed the music, sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> hello, Slivers, good morning. Friends, you spent bits. Me, Benny the Bits Bear, shows up and says hello. It's too early for me, so I'm going back to hibernation. Bye-bye. <laughs> Dead last again wants to be the Undertaker. Yeah, let's let's go to the Undertaker. So the Undertaker is 323. Go there. 323. Okay. What? You really wish to work with me? That's fantastic news. Join me behind the saloon in 294. I've got something to show you. All right, so we go to 294. We have very, uh, we got some uh, elements of choose your own adventure here. Okay, 294, here we are with the uh, Undertaker. Here, you see, this is what I'm so proud of, but I truly need for someone to build a real cemetery. One day, if you do something about it, I will be truly grateful. In the meantime, come and help me out. Uh, head to 139. Uh, will Tombstone Pile attract any problems? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Yes, we are the Undertaker. Nice, nice reference, uh, Dead Last Again. <laughs> uh, so 139. Let's see what happens with this Undertaker. Are you helping or daydreaming? After helping Norm, after helping Norman the Undertaker, go to one eighteen. Okay, so we're we're doing some manual labor here. One eighteen. Okay. Thank you, sir. After pocketing the three hundred dollars and noting it in your ledger, you head to the saloon in two eighty two. Hey, not bad. We made three hundred bucks. Okay, so let's go to our ledger. Uh, we made 300 bucks. Where is the money? Monthly info. Okay. Uh, bank account. So we had zero to begin with. We now have $300. Well done. Good choice. Dead last again. Made 300 bucks. Um, digging some graves or whatever. Okay. Uh, I need to hydrate. Folks, oh, stay hydrated out there. It's, it's going to be another warm one out here in uh, Southern Cal. Southern California. So. Oh, by the way, why don't, I, I should have read this first. This is the back of the book. <clears throat> Traveling across the vast plains of the Wild West, you arrive at your town, a dusty and forgotten collection of six ramshackle buildings. After surveying the town and its handful of residents, you make a decision. You'll put down roots, improve the town, and bring prosperity to its citizens. Construct buildings, hire qualified staff, buy land, manage your finances, and explore the nearby wilderness all in the pursuit of making your town the booming center of the West, because this town is yours and the mayor is you. So yeah, I should have started with that, but there it is. That's, that's the flavor text. Uh, we have helped the undertaker. We made 300 bucks. Thanks to dead last again. And then we're going to continue. Oh, let me check the comments here. Um, thought we had 15 to start. Oh, we had 15 bucks to start. Uh, finances bank account, write down how much. Oh no. Uh, according to this, it says here, bank account, uh, we you start your adventure with zero dollars. Was the whiskey five bucks? Oh, yeah. How did we pay that? Maybe we found five dollars on the ground or something. Hmm. Well, um, let me see. Monthly income with each. Okay, so you're gonna get monthly income um, when you build uh, buildings, of course. So okay. Well, we may be fifteen dollars off. We we will. Con let's just say that we found five bucks on the ground and paid for our whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, five was the town population. That is correct. Uh, at least we, I thought we had five. Yeah, I'm not. That was really weird. So we have three. We'll call it three hundred dollars for now. 
Uh, so 118, thank you, sir. After pocketing three hundred dollars, no near ledger. You head to the saloon in two eighty two. So we're back to the, we're going back to the saloon. Let's see what happens at the saloon. So how was your first day's work? Stressful, but I've got a feeling I'm gonna like this town. So glug glug glug. As a matter of fact, I'm officially moving here today. Slams the slams the shot there. You're obviously very motivated, and that's a good thing. Go to page, uh, go to panel number 70. And you see the barkeep in the back there. So let's go to 70. A vault, I think the panel would have noted to add the, yeah, that's true. That's true. I think that's like, sort of like a, they give you the five bucks to, you know, start your adventure or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> well done, cowboy. For $150, you've just, Acquired a nice location and a few planks to build your small house. Add it to the... Okay, so for 150 So we're now at 150 Okay. And we're, we've got a small house. And we're going to have to add it to our map here. Let's see what we do. $150. You've just acquired a nice location and a few planks to build your small house. Add it to the map found at the end of this book takes up one square next add one population in your ledger since you're now officially a resident of the town and add 50 bucks to your monthly income then return to the soon okay so let's take care of these things so it was 150 dollars so now we're down to 150 in our bank account because we have a small house we're getting 50 bucks per month monthly income okay uh population is now six it was five you know i'm assuming the bark our friend the barkeep uh, the three business owners, that's four, and there's a fifth person we don't know about. But we are number six. It is our town. Um, and then we've built a small building. It's going to take one square on here. Um, so as you can see, here's the saloon. I, I don't have my uh, green screen set up today. Uh, here's the saloon, and here's uh, some of the other buildings. Um, I don't want to be too close to town. Why don't we... Uh, this is the town zone. So we have to build somewhere here. Why don't we... Let's see, the guy smoking the pipe is five. Oh, yeah, the pipe, uh, the old guy. Thank you. Uh, where do y'all want to build? Should we build? We have to build in the town zone somewhere. Um, I like to be away from town. sort of want to chill with my thoughts, you know, nice and relaxed, away from the hustle and bustle of the main strip. So maybe we could go towards, you know, let, let's move towards the river. I think that would be a nice place, you know, if we need to, uh, you know, take a bath or whatever. <laughs> Uh, so it's going to take one square, so we're going to put um, our house here. I'll just put H for house. Okay. So our house is going to be in the um, southwest corner of our town. Um, let's see. I've got our ledger. We spent 50, or we get 50 bucks income now. Uh, return to the saloon in page 80. But if this is your first building and you would like to learn more about how to build them, go to 339. This is our first building. So let's go to 339. Uh, Slacker said, hey, it's a read and write. Yeah, totally. Uh, so let's learn about building more buildings in 339. 339. Okay. <laughs> you require assistance? Perfect. That's what I'm here for. So we got another character here. Maybe this is, uh, I don't know. Uh, this is the omnipresent narrator, perhaps. First off, look at the map. I strongly recommend you download it from Van Ryder Games' website, and we did. Let's uh, get the map out. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'll, I want to print this in in color and also um, laminate. Why is this all crooked? I just don't care about. Okay. So again, we built our house right here. As you can see, the map is divided into multiple zones. You are currently in the zone to the right called Town Zone. That's that. This is where you'll find the saloon, the sheriff's office, and my house. Okay, so he does live here. For now, you can build within that perimeter. Don't worry, don't worry however, you will have many opportunities to acquire new land as you progress through your adventure. Other than needing enough money in your bank account, the other only other requirement for your buildings is that each has at least one side that touches the street, as you can see in the example below. Um, did you get all that? Excellent. You can now build your house 
which will also serve as your office. Draw to your map and then return the saloon in uh, page 80. So yeah, you can, you have to you can't put a building within a, a group of buildings. They have to touch uh, somewhere on the street, which we did. We're out here in the southwest corner. Doe and Tex, how's it going? Good to see you on here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are playing Your Town, a graphic novel adventure from uh, Van Ryder Games, our sponsor for this episode. So we're going to go back to page 80, back to the saloon, which is, a you know, that's like the town hub, right? We all hang out in the saloon. Uh, page 80, here we are. Oh, more, more uh, things happen. Let's see what happens here. So, I hear you're settling in. This is us, apparently. Yep. What's possess you, kid? Settling in this dung heap. There's no one around, even less to do, nothing worth nothing. Last time anything exciting happened was when that fool Jackman hammered a nail in his toe while building this air saloon. <laughs> Precisely. I've got grand plans for this town, and I think that within a year, it'll be one of the finest in the West. Everyone calls me Doe. Oh, it's Doug. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, Doug. It, it does. I don't know. I, you know, the first thing I saw, it looked like Doe. But thank you, Doug, for the correction. Welcome, by the way. Um, let's get back here. So it'll be one of the finest in the West. Hold on. Did I hear you right? Did you just proclaim yourself mayor of the town? Of this town? No, 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 Sheriff. I already have Jackman, the engineer, the undertaker, and old Mackenzie's approval. I'm only missing yours. If you failed the shooting test or haven't worked with the sheriff yet, go to 206. Otherwise, go to 195. Okay, we have not worked with the sheriff yet, so we're going to 2, 206. Let's see what happens. What? You'll never get my support, stranger. Never! The sheriff does not appear to approve of your plans, nor does he like you. Your relationship with him is now bad, B. Note this in your ledger, then head to your office. Okay, so again, back to our ledger. It's going to, let's see, <clears throat> approval. So we do not have this approval. Uh, now, bad. Relationship with the sheriff is bad. So here is the sheriff, Norman McKenzie. A couple of spaces left over for other characters. So right now... It's bad with the sheriff. And people see it as an H. Yeah, that's that's totally, you know, Doug, that's right. I totally thought that I-N, Doug in text, was the H. So that's why it's Doe. <laughs> um, okay, so we've noted this in our ledger. Go to 175 now. I have a feeling we're going to have a showdown with the sheriff. Okay. 175. Here's the approval. Not everyone is, is enthusiastic about your plans, but you do begin your term as mayor with an approval rating of five. Okay. Approval rating. Uh, so we have approval. So we have proclaimed ourselves mayor. We have an approval of five, but the sheriff don't like us. Uh, during your adventure, you will meet residents satisfied with how you're managing the town and others not so much. Each time this happens, satisfaction and disapproval, disapproval, you must raise or lower your approval rating. This rating will have an impact on your adventure. If your citizens approve of your actions, you'll gain advantages. If your approval rating gets too low, you risk being chased out of town before the end of your term. Now head to 317. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, here we are, 317. Hey, here we are. We're, we're looking pretty relaxed now in our office. Uh, ledger out of the way. Hmm. Nope. I'm afraid you got the wrong idea. Being mayor of a town is not about taking it easy. You've got a lot of work to do. Go to the beginning of this book to read the rules. If you already played your town, you must still go there to choose your mission objective. Okay, so now this is the part where we go to the rules. So we're going to read this. So I'm not going to read all these. I'm going to... As Rodney Smith would say, I will leave this for you to discover on your own. But <clears throat> let's look at the different missions you can do. <clears throat> so right now, if you haven't, yeah, this is really tiny text. If you haven't started your adventure and this is your first time playing, now is the time to turn the page and begin, which we already did. Uh, don't worry, you'll return here later to choose a mission. Okay, so now we have 
done like our introductory uh, phase to the game. Now we're looking here. Otherwise, choose the objective you wish to attempt to complete. The number of stars indicates the mission's difficulty level. If you succeed, at the end of the game, you will multiply your points by the difficulty level of your mission. Once you've chosen your mission, return to 88 to make your first decisions. <clears throat> so, build at least five buildings in Zone D. That's a star. Build 15 different buildings. Have a population of at least 100. Complete the adventure without cheating. Okay. So then that's, those are the easier ones. We can go to the more most difficult ones. Um, have on, ooh, have a monthly income of $3,000. Build at least two buildings in each zone. Uh, so these are the tougher ones, the three stars. Build all buildings on the building registry. Oh my gosh. Let's look at that building registry. What the heck? <clears throat> so, oh, by the way, I built my small house here. So there's one, okay, so I've already built this, 50. So I've got one resident, that's me. It cost me 150, and uh, I make a $50 per um, month on that. Then there's bonuses, no requirements, because the first one, and uh, approval. Oh, okay, so I was supposed to um, add an approval rating as well. So here's all the buildings here, and then, look at that, there's a second page. So that seems, that's why it's three stars, the most difficult one. Okay. Uh, let me, I need to hydrate. Uh, Cyphers, oh, that's interesting how they handle the branching. It's like there are a number of relate, different related stories, all layered. Yeah, that's that's totally right, Cyphers. Uh, just logged in, looks interesting. What game? Oh, Mini Painter 53. This is Your Town, a graphic novel, uh, novel adventure from Van Ryder Games. They are actually kickstarting the new series. So this is, I think, series two. They're on series, uh, series four. And you can buy all the old ones on the Kickstarter as well. Seems like that would help with give some replayability. Absolutely. Oh, and Vault Hunker, thank you for answering the question. Dr. Three Putts back. Hey, Dr. Three Putt. Hopefully you've had some one putts uh, mixed in with the three putts. Uh, Garlic SCR, thank you for joining us. I love seeing the Bruno uh, email there next to your name. One of them is a sky. Oh, did I? Did Is there a skyscraper? Really? I didn't even see that. So, yeah, we got small farm, uh, stagecoats. Oh, I'm just randomly. <laughs> Steak oil stall. There, oh my gosh, you're right. There is a skyscraper. Whoa. That's obviously the very last one. You need special authorization. Interesting. Let's look at some of the other missions. So we're not we're we're done with this little uh just a little sample, folks. But yeah, you're you um I'll, I'll go to page 80 in just a second. So own all zones, have a approval rate of a hundred, which seems like it'd be tough. Um <clears throat> oh, check this out. If you're a young reader or wish to play a shorter and simpler game, you may ignore the events. You have um, unlimited bullets, and you start your adventure with 500 bucks in your bank account. Okay, so there's the like the easier version, but wow. Okay, so return to page 88 to make your first decision. So let's go to 88. Is it? Yeah, return to 88. Let's see what we have to decide here. 88. Aha. So I am going to end it here, but I'll, I'll read it, but we're going to end it here. Um, we have all the different zones on the map, which we, I just showed you. If you have the hardware store, you can buy and sell objects in 312. Okay, we do not have the, the hardware store. Important. Once you've completed the third month, whenever you return to this panel, you must first consult the engineer in 267 before taking any other action. Interesting. Okay. So three months in, you're going to have to start talking to the engineer. I'm, I'm assuming because you're, you're building more stuff. If you just return from exploring, again, remember, you can explore in the, with the wilderness, friends. If you just return from exploring, a month has passed. Note this in your ledger and update your bank account with your monthly income. Then you can explore new zones in order to find raw resources, meet new folks, and in time, buy new land. If and only if you just return from exploring, you can visit the streets of your town in 222. Note that you can only do this up to five times during your adventure. Keep track in your ledger. If you just complete the 12th month of your adventure, go to 204, which I'm assuming is the end. So yeah, right off the bat, you have some choices here, what zone you want to go to, and then some conditions. If you have the hardware store open, or if you went exploring or whatever. So um, <clears throat> there it is, friends. That is your town. Um, whoops. 
Let me catch up. In the 1870s, a skyscraper was three stories. Oh, wow. <laughs> this one looks to play a bit differently from the Van Ryder. I have Captive. Oh, okay, Doug, yeah. Captive, that's the other one. I. That's the one where you're, you have to escape something, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, your town, you are building your town uh, in the Old West. Uh, Van Ryder Games, uh, you see the link there, friends. Please check it out. Uh, if so inclined, and I want to thank Van Ryder Games for being a longtime sponsor of uh, Tabletop Tonight, which is right now the AM edition for me on the West Coast, uh, afternoon edition for some of you, and maybe the evening edition as well. Um, I'm uh, this is gonna be cool, so I'm totally gonna play this uh, obviously just solo. I, I'm I won't stream this, I'm just gonna play it um, by myself because I, I love books like this. I don't know if you all remember, this is totally aging me again, but dating me again. There was a series called now I just a sorcery, sorcery were uh, was a series of books just like this, back in like the eighties I think, and it was by Steve Jackson. Now it's not the Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson games. This is a a UK gentleman, um, who created the series of of books. It was like choose your adventure, but it was very gamery. Um, and you would like you have like a spell a separate spell book. And I remember saving my allowance back in the day just so I could buy these books. I had I think the first three adventures. I had the separate spell book. I would go to Vroman's bookstore. If you all in Southern California, Vroman's is like a legendary bookstore here. Um, but yeah, I, I would, oh, I, I love playing those things. I don't know if I ever completed it um, because I might've just, I might've got frustrated, just ended it, or I might've died off. My my character might've been killed. Um, this one looks to play. I have a first five books set. I like them. There's a lot of, oh, right, right on James. Oh, Silver's Nose. Yeah, it's Steve Jackson. Yes, I remember those. Sorcery is an interactive, yes, oh, I was going to mention, thank you, a book app on iOS and Android. Now, I I, I downloaded them. I, I think I bought them. I just, I never played them. I feel bad. Uh, Slivers beat me too, Doug. There are digital version. Yes, yes. So, yeah, fr friends, uh, check out uh, Your Town and check out uh, Van Ryder, their latest Kickstarter. Um, that's the first half of our show. The second half is... What's in your bag? Uh, so if you're just joining us, good morning. This is the morning mix. Uh, my name's Ruel. This is um, my live stream that I do is normally Tuesday through Thursdays where I play games. But I've been trying to mix it up, right, um, these days by doing uh, different times and uh, doing different things. So this one we did the uh, Your Town um, adventure book or part of it. And then now we're going to look at what's in my bag. And my bag today has been provided by Quiver Time. Uh, Quiver Time makes these uh, little cases here, like card cases, so you can carry. Now this is the smaller one called the Bolt. The regular size Quiver is like, I think that I have it in the closet, but uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'm just gonna stick to the Bolt. It's about almost double this size, I think. Uh, this one, I put it, now you, this one does come with two different straps. I went with the wrist strap, so I could just carry it like this. Uh, there's one that's like a full shoulder one. I use that for the, the bigger um, quiver. But for this one, I just do this. And as um, I mentioned earlier, our friend Dead Last Again had uh, gifted, very, very kind of him, uh, years ago, actually, a few years ago, uh, gifted um, this wonderful print here, um, the Filipino flag. I am Filipino-American, proud proud of it, um, from an artist that also, when uh, I have it, it it's, it's matted, and I want to get a frame for it. It used to be up on here. But I, I want to put it on the wall. So, but the artists also included stickers. So included this one here. And of course, my hometown, LA. Always proud uh, LA guys. So um, these stickers are great. They're like the vinyl stickers. They're super shiny, super, they're going to handle the wear and tear, hopefully. I, I just put these on this on this new bolt. So I do want to thank Quiver uh, for sending this over. I uh, super appreciate it. Also got a new follower. Uh, one Fabian 1986 thank you for the follow. Um, we do... We do analog alerts here, so we don't have the fancy Twitch alerts. We have Felicia the Follow Fish. Felicia shows up whenever there's a new follower. She swims around, says hello, and then she takes off. And since I'm by myself, I and y'all in chat can join me. Say bye, Felicia. Thanks for the follow, one Fabian, nineteen eighty six. Much appreciated. There's all the bye Felicias in chat. Always nice. Uh, thank you, one Fabian and Daryl Gaming. I just saw you're in the house. Thank you, friend. Horthane reminded me to hydrate, which I need to do. Friends, hydrate with me if you if you should if you shall. And let's take a look at what's in my bag. So let's go here. This is the bolt. Uh, so this is the smaller. Um, man, this camera's all messed up. 
Uh, yeah, this is the smaller size quiver. Um, it did come up with two different straps. This is the, the hand one. 8x6 hydration daily. Yes, thank you for the reminder, Dr. Thuput. Okay, here's what I have in my quiver. Um, you can see it's got one, two, three, four, five games. Uh, these are the components for the games. I will share them in just a minute. So you can see, you have, oh, I forgot to zip this up, but this is for the instructions. I also have, hey, you all know what that is, roll and write pens, right? The erasable pens. Quick, you know, before we get started, any, uh, maybe I spoiled it already, any guesses as to what I have in my bag, in in my uh, vault here? Um, any guesses? All I have in reach is coffee. I haven't moved on from my wake up juice uh, yet today. Yeah. Uh, silver. Oh, good guess. Uh, a frog. Uh, that is a great guess. I do not have a frog. <laughs> now, Silvers, are you actually talking about a, oh, uh, yeah. No freaking clue. That, that's, that would be my answer too, poor thing. So let's open this up. Uh, unicorn food chain match. <laughs> Push. Oh, Daryl got one of them. And I think it, was it because of this, Daryl? Yes, I do have um, push in the game. Uh, TI4, oh, really close call. <laughs> Classical hand cross. <laughs> y'all, for, uh, for the first, uh, I, it's old, not even 9 a.m., y'all are bringing your A game when it comes to comedy. I love it. Yes, food chain magnet TI4. <laughs> yeah, um, you know what? Well, I'm just going to go down the list here. You can see some of the instructions here. And... You know, in the, uh, just like the quiver, it has the little, nice little pocket for, um, the games. And, hey, spoiler alert, look what I have. This. I do put the pens here. You, you could put the pens down here, I believe. But I, I like them in the little pocket here. Okay. So this game here, start with that. And it does, it does come with dividers, uh, these little Velcro things, uh, which I'll show you in a second. First game I have is Enchanted Plumes. This one, card, these are all card-based games, obviously. That's what can fit in here. Uh, this game is from Calliope Games. Chanted Plumes. I love this one. And actually, Daryl be Gaming, and I played this one uh, recently uh, during our one-year um, uh, Twitch anniversary. Uh, this is, this, I feel like it reminds me a lot of uh, Arboretum, where you have that, you know, hey, what card am I going to draft this turn? Which one am I going to give up? Um, and it's got this really neat mechanism where you're, it's set collection at its heart, but you're building uh, the plumes, you know, the feathers of a peacock. And as you do that, um, you can make it any size you want, then you'll score points. The points at the top of your feather, of the feathers here, that row, negative points. So you're trying to get, if they're zero through nine, you really want the zeros and ones up here. Then these here are going to be positive points. And if you complete a peacock like you've done here, then you'll get one point bonus for each card that's on there. Really, really cool game. Um, I said I'm only on my first pot of the undead poaching. Yeah, friends, drink up that coffee, drink up that tea, whatever you, you may have there, and enjoy it and get your day going. Uh, so here's an example of an uncompleted peacock, or an incomplete peacock. Uh, you would get points, so negative points here, points here, but no bonus points, okay? And what I like, this is a really neat thing, the feathers or plumes that you put here, they determine what you're going to be able to put down in the rows below. So you have to match uh, colors. You're going to have to have a white one here or, you know, whatever. Like, you can't just randomly put them there. Really good game. Highly recommend it. Uh, so that's Enchanted Plumes. Plays two to six. Uh, as I mentioned, these are the uh, Velcro um, little dividers. And just put them here. And, like, I can put my cards here. Actually, I'll take them out. The next game I have is... This one I don't see as much anymore. I really love this game. It is... Zany penguins, and now that I'm as I'm talking about um, arboretum, this is another sort of like Ar arboretum. I guess I like that sort of like it's got this really interesting um, gameplay where you're trying to this one gain majorities of um, different penguins. So there's different penguins trying to take over the world. You have your pirate penguins, you have your city penguins, you have your um, North Pole penguins. And you have your jungle penguins. And as you play, um, you're, it's a sort of like card drafting where you give one card to your left, one card to your right, and then you're going to look at the cards in your hand and place one face down. 
as you turn them over, you're going to um, put those in your, you're building a tableau of different penguins. So you'll have a tableau of, you know, your yellow penguins in one, red penguins in another. And they're all like, they all, you know, have different themes. Like the yellows, I believe, are the, um, the outdoor penguins or the desert penguins. Uh, the green are the jungle and blue is the ice and so forth. Have it, has anyone played this one? Um, I, I really, I, I think Zany Penguins is so underrated. It's by uh, Bruno Cathala and it's really simple, but as you go to the game, God, it's funny. Now that I think about both of these sort of have, I feel like this is a friendlier Arboretum and this is also a friendlier Arboretum. They're two totally different games, um, but this one probably has a, a little more take that than this. So yeah, it's super cute. Um, you got all the little penguins. So what you're doing, as you're playing the cards, you're building your tableau. I'm gonna move this over here. So let's say I built this tableau here. And you'll notice some of the cards have special abilities which trigger. I'm not gonna get into that. But um, like let's say I did this. Here's blue, get a couple of these here. Uh, here's a night penguin or alien penguin. It's got a spaceship on it. Okay. Let's say this is the end of uh, the game, my tableau. We each go, we're going to look at the numbers and add them up. Whoever has the highest number count in each thing is going to score those. So let's say I had five and you and chat had like a total of 12. That means you score 12 points. I score the lowest in my uh, pile. So let's say I had, um, let me find a different one here. Where's the night penguin? Here it is. So I have nine. You have 12. You score your 12 points. I only get to score the lowest. So instead of nine points, I only score four points. Okay. And then same thing here. If I had eight in yellow and you had three, a number three in yellow, you would only score three points. I would score my full eight points. And then you just, you add up all the penguins. If you don't have anything, obviously in a color you score is nothing. You're not eligible to score. As long as you have one, even if you don't win it by majority, you're going to score your lowest penguin. So that's that's the game. It's like a 20 minute game. Um, I feel it's not as like brain burning as Arboretum because, you know, Arboretum, you have to like figure out like how to build your tableau left and right, up and down and try to match those up. This one doesn't have any of that. It take that takes out that element, but it really it streamlines it and makes it um, like an easier, less complex game by just worrying about um, majorities. One, I, I really do like these abilities, though, and I said I wasn't going to talk about them. I lied. <laughs> The number two. Now, if you know, if you're, if you're, you know, I don't know if you can count cards or whatever. If you know your opponents are going to play high cards in a round, right? So everyone, you know, we go left and right. You can play your number two card. And what this does is it blows up. It makes, it forces your opponents to discard. If they play like a nine or an eight on that turn, um, it, they have to, uh, you force them to discard. So it's a really nice uh, way to uh, even things out. Uh, the number one's a double. You get to play two cards on your next round. So really cool game. Highly underrated. High, I definitely recommend it if you haven't seen already. That's Zany Penguins. Um, I don't even know who makes this game. Or if it's... Yeah, it's the book doesn't have... I mean, it just has a big penguin on it. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I think it's from... Asmodee might have picked it up. I have to try this game. See, yeah, I highly recommend it. Uh, Dead last again. The art is fun. No special part. Um, no spatial part so faster. But yeah, that's it exactly, James. That the lack of the spatial uh, stuff definitely speeds up the game. Um, and you know, speaking of uh, Arboretum, yeah. So that's funny that I chose two games here that reminded me of Arboretum because I love Arboretum and I I don't have it in my um I think it's in my other quiver, the bigger one. Uh, studio, oh, Bomb, Bombex, yes. Uh, Blue Orange, I think, uh, comes in, it does come in a little 10, yes. Bomb, Bombex. And I know it's changed publishers a few times, I believe. Um, Arboretum is fantastic as well, both, but yeah, love Arboretum. Love the Penguin game, very much like Arboretum, but with Penguin, underrated for sure, Zany, yes, thank you, James. Uh, Daryl, Daryl, we've played this one before, haven't we? Uh, the Penguin game, Zany Penguins. Uh, super cute, yeah, Mom Gamer, super cute game. Uh, love, yeah, um, Dead Last Game, I love our room too. Only the first part of the Undead Potion, okay. That's what BGG says, cool. So that's, uh, we've got Enchanted Plumes, uh, we've got, uh, Zany Penguins. It's funny, the, the penguin, the rule book doesn't actually say Zany Penguins on it, it just has the penguin, <laughs> the ice, uh, penguin here. Object of the game and so forth, okay. 
Um, let's go to this next game. And Daryl, you were, you guessed it based on this die here. Uh, this is Push. Uh, this is from Ravensburger. It is uh, right there, uh, ages eight and up, two to six players. This is like the ultimate push your luck game, right? Very, I mean, it is push your luck to its heart, right? You're just drawing cards, place them here, and then you're going to decide when to stop and add one to your tableau, or you're going to continue to push your luck. You cannot place the same number of the same color somewhere, so you have to put it on a different color um, like that. And if you get the same color or same number somewhere, or if you cannot place a card, then you have busted. Um, and then you, I think your opponent gets one or something. I, I'll have to reread the rules, but this one is a favorite because it's a nice, like perfect filler, uh, super easy to learn and, uh, quickly played it. I mean, it's a big old deck of cards, but you're going to, you you rip right through this. Um, actually I have my little notes. So when Michelle and I stream, I always take a little handwritten notes just to stick on the monitor to remind me of stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I roll. I always have my little notes. So draw one card at a time, make up to three stacks, cannot play a card of the same st stack with the same color or number, uh, only r one roll per stack. Um, oh, re-roll. Uh, when you stop, you, you put them in your bench and then you can take a turn to bank them. And when you bank them, that's, you score them for the end of the game. They cannot be touched. If you have the bank, then your opponent can sort of mess with you with the little re-roll cards. A super fun game, played twice last week and was a massive hit. Oh, nice. Awesome, James. Yeah, I love this game. Yeah, it's super straightforward. This is the one that forces you to re-roll or re-roll or roll the die. And then if you have that color on your bench, you have to discard. Um, but um, if you don't, then it doesn't affect you. Highly recommend this one as a filler. Really easy to learn. 15, 20 minute game. That is Push from our friends at Robin's Burger. Um, let's continue. So you'll see here, like I have the, um, you know, little dividers. They also came with these hard plastic dividers and this, these actually have quiver on them, almost like a little index card, but these are, I don't know if you, these are like hard plastic, hard plastic. Whereas these are like the soft, you know, I mean, it has cardboard in it, but it's, it's still a lot softer than these. So I just use them. Um, I mean, I have extra, uh, more of these in, uh, in the, uh, other quiver there, but I just uh, used the little dividers that came with it. Let me put these back, and I'll show you how easy it is to put it back. Let's put the little divider there. Velcro. Boom. Uh, let's see. So that is Enchanted Plumes. We'll put Zany Penguins next. Divider. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's look at the next game here. It is... Anyone know what this is? Uh, let's see if y'all can guess. I could not guess this if I had to look, uh, just based on on this the card uh backs any idea super fun game play choice and was it oh okay yeah yeah nice this is see if I'll, I'll wait a second i'll give you all a hint my first game night was four fast games in concept we played push twice crossing and uh, two times and oh nice oh awesome uh so we've got key forge saboteur uh wow not sure this, yeah daryl i know you like this oh, i'm pretty sure you like this game yeah, there's no way I could have guessed it. Uh, this is this is a tough question. So what if I I'll turn one card over? See if y'all can. Let me see. Yeah, you should be able. to... Hopefully, we'll, we'll see. Any idea what game this is? I'll give you silver and gold. There it is. I was gonna give you the hint. Phil Walker Hardy. Yes, this is silver and gold. Uh, let me get the rule book. All right there, silver and gold. Uh, from uh, Panasaurus, yeah. So this game, so here's the little score sheets for us, for everyone. Uh, these are, I love this game. This game, and that's why I have the pens. Uh, you can write on these, right? So um, you have, I believe it's eight cards. You shuffle these up and they're like Tetris pieces. You just flip them over one at a time. And then you'll have two of these to start with and you're gonna X out depending on this shape there's eight of them you will draw seven in a turn one at a time and let's say i do this one two three i've crossed out an x so it lets me i'll get another um space on either one um i can do like maybe this one for a gold coin i do this um 
Yes, Phil Walker Harding, praise be. <laughs> the Brothers Murph, are they on like, oh, I want to raid the Brothers Murph. Let me know, folks, you can let me know when they're alive. We'll raid them afterwards. Yeah, uh, silver and gold, so good. So yeah, this is really neat. Um, So when you're crossing out things on either one, um, so, oh, actually, this I, I did it wrong. I would not be able to do this because I have to do the shape. Ah, I'm cheating already. Look at that, folks. So do I have an eraser here? I'll just use my finger. Um, so on this one, I had to go like this. Okay. And then I marked off the coin here. Once you get to the first coin, you're going to get um, extra points. Um, where's the thing here? There it is. So I'm the first one to uh, get that. So I get six points. I put that here. When I fill out this row, I should say. And uh, these are all the shapes in the deck, so it's a good little reminder. Uh, these look like a good games for my family. I have myself and one kid who are gamers and another uh, kid and wife who aren't. We usually end up playing 20. Yeah, uh, Doug, highly recommend Silver and Gold. Super easy, really cool. Um, so they're all. Um, so when you're playing, you have everyone has two of these cards. There will be like a, a little market of, I think, three cards um, available so to choose from. So after you complete one, you can choose one um, to fill. Uh, you're going to fill a bunch of these during the game, and at the end of the game, uh, they're worth, these are your victory points here. Super, I mean, uh, Doug, silver and gold, I want to say, anyone know the retail price? It's no more than 20 bucks. I want to say it's like 15 uh, and uh, it's one of the big hits with Pandasaurus, so they should have it in stock. Highly, highly recommend. It's super easy. Michelle and I, uh, so my family, Doug, uh, we are also casual gamers. I, I like, I tend to like the heavier stuff, but um, we play a lot of casual games. This one always seems to always hit the table on a regular basis. So good. Love this game. Uh, that's silver and gold. Uh, Phil Walker Harding, our our buddy, Phil Walker Harding. Um, I don't have a napkin in here, darn it. Okay. I'll, uh, I'm going to put these off to the side so I can erase them off camera afterwards. Um, 1630 on oh my god that's a steal buy it right now friends it's you won't regret it i've gotten my money's worth and then some from this game yeah 20 bucks yeah that that sounds that sounds right okay um i'll put this here and i do have those cards that remind me to actually what i'll do is i'll leave this one out and we're gonna put push back into back into the quiver bolt this is the quiver bolt is that whoops i want to do it this way all right one final game this one uh, here's all the pens for silver and gold these uh, the the game does in coming uh does come with four pens um the only bummer is like they don't come with the erasers so you have to i mean i was using my finger but yeah, you just have to have like a paper towel or something around. Um, this goes here. Paid full MSRP. Still worth it, but even better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you can find it for cheaper, like I know it's, I've seen it as low as like 14, I think, during sales. Um, I'm sure it could be even cheaper than that. But highly, highly recommend silver and gold. Um, for even, yeah, for 20 bucks. I played it a bunch of times. It's, it's totally worth it. Okay, final um, game in my Quiver Bolt. Thank you again for hanging out with us, friends. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. I really appreciate you all hanging out with me. Um, this is something I'd like to do moving forward, sort of like uh, just different things, uh, different types of streams, because um, normally I just play um, uh, games Tuesdays through Thursdays with friends and or family, but I like to, you know, do different things uh, like this. Um... Dale asked me, I played a game with Silver and Gold that had, a, oh my gosh, 105, 104, that is insane. I think I've scored 100 once. Michelle, my wife, is really good at this. She she always knocks it out of the park with these type of, like, um, uh, polyomino games. Um, I know she's scored 100 points, but man, that's such a close score. That was great. I'm going to take one uh, more hydrate um, break, so hydrate with me, friends. And let's take a look at the final game here. Hey, to, to live in Dysonelli, good morning. Lurking while working, we won a quiver on one of the TLN streams. Oh, nice. Mike filled it up with a bunch of card games real quick. That's so cool. Uh, one Fabian, uh, Fabian, this is a quiver. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. So quiver or quiver time, you can find them on the social medias. 
uh, quiver time. Uh, they have a, a case that's twice the size of this, which is the standard quiver. Uh, this one's the bolt. The bolt is the smaller one, so it holds less games, obviously. But I like it. It's a lot easier for me to carry around. I just put the little wrist strap, and I'm, you know, carrying my, my games around like that. Um, and as I've done, I, I said earlier, just a shout out to Dead Last Again. Dead Last Again, who's in chat. Uh, he sent me this, uh, they sent me this really cool uh, print uh, by a, an artist that did this Filipino flag with a bunch of uh, things from LA in it. And uh, the print I have, I'm going to mount it on my wall, but the, the artist included a sticker um, of the Philippine flag and then also LA. And I love the LA one because it's made up of all kinds of uh, different um, famous uh, buildings in LA. Like you have the Watts Towers, um, the, uh, is this the Disney, Disney Hall? You got downtown in there. Um, the Griffith Observatory, I believe, is in there. I'm going to have to take a magnifying glass to see all this stuff. It's it's really detailed. Um, the Philippine flag is neat. It has a jeepney. I don't know if you can see that in the red. A little jeepney there. Uh, palm trees and so forth. And then the, the rice fields. Really cool. Yeah, the prints are those prints are so cool, right? I love them. So what I've been doing today, so I, earlier I played um, Your Town uh, from... Um, oh, Your Town from Van Ryder Games as a graphic novel adventure. And then now I'm just sharing what's in my bag. And the bag today is uh, the Quiver Time Bolt. So I've got one more game to play. And actually, To Live and Dice in LA, I believe you we play this together. So I'm going to see if, if anyone can guess what game this is. It's a card-based game. There are some bits here that I need it for. And um, Mom Gamer 101, do you hold on to the boxes when you feel like Quiver? Or is this the game's new home? Mom Gamer, that is a great question. And this is an important question. I am so bad about this. So when I get expansions for games, excuse me, when I get expansions for games, I'll immediately toss out the box. I put the expansion in the, as long as it fits, and 99% of the time it fits. I take the expansion, put it in the base game box, no problem. But with the quiver and the quiver time, I'm so, I... I can't get rid of the boxes. I hold on to the boxes, you know, and I think I do that because um, I like to swap in and out uh, the games that I have here. So I do have two quivers, um, but depends on what I'm doing or where I'm going. I'll swap out games. Like if I'm going to see my family uh, who are more casual gamers, you know, my brothers and their their fam their kids, um, I probably wouldn't bust out the game that I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, I'd definitely bring push. And silver and gold but i may swap out some like you know maybe even like a standard uh card deck would go in there um but yeah uh, I, I i don't know i know people get rid of them all the time and i figured this so i'm always trying to look for space in my collection right um you can see behind me i got a ton of games the small box i always i always justify like the small box games don't take up that much space so i do have like a little area where i just have like these small boxes here um but yeah i i know people get rid of the boxes all the time and like I had code names uh, in one of these uh, cases, in the other case, and I haven't gotten rid of the code names box. Now, granted, I do have code names and code names duet in one box, so I did get rid of one of the boxes. The I think I kept the duet box, but yeah. Um, let's see, whatever. I just bought the bolt. Oh, nice, uh, Fabian. Awesome. That, that's so cool. Yeah. It, it, congrats on the 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 fine purchase, my friend. Expansions in the base game for sure. Hold on to quiver boxes for that same. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Three. But yeah, I just I can't. Yeah, that makes sense. I would do the same. Yep. Uh, Dead last. I think of the quiver as a smaller version of my IKEA bag or something like that. I swap out games all the time. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Um. And you know, I probably could get rid of like, like silver and gold. I could probably get rid of that box because I'm never gonna get rid of some. I love. But again, it's just I like to swap in and out. And I don't want like just a stack of cards on my table you know, or some random bits just hanging out. Like, I'd rather put it in a box so I don't lose them. Um, I lose stuff easily, so, yeah. Anyways, let's look at the final game. And I know the Brothers Murph went live. I'd love to raid them if y'all follow me along with them. We'll, we'll start in just a minute. Whoops. This game, To Live and Dice and I, I believe we played. Um, Dead Last Again says, I agree that expansion boxes are for recycling, throw away. If they fit, yeah, totally. Yeah, I have no problem doing that. But it's funny, like, I won't do that with the, the small one. There it is, yes, uh, fruit market, yes. Ha uh, ha, a nice one to live in. Yeah, this is Filipino fruit market. Um, this is a game here. This game by Pierre Sylvester. I don't even know who publishes or if it's still published uh, anymore. This is a trick-taking game, a Filipino-themed one. So you have the food cart. 
Again, probably not the best art. I mean, I feel like it's very clip arty. Uh, this was, you know, self-published years ago. Uh, you have the different fruit carts here. And you have um, the different fruits. Uh, they're numbered 1 through 10, like the pineapple and uh, so forth. Uh, bananas, um, jackfruit, and uh, I think uh, lonzones. So it's a trick-taking game. But what I love about this is every player has uh, little meeples, right? You have your little... I forget what they're called. I don't know if, um, just, oh, your little sellers. So we are, your meeples are your sellers, right? So you have, everyone gets a set of these yellow, blue, red, so forth. You're going to have these here, the food cart. These determine the trump card, okay, in the trick. So on your turn, like everyone starts with a certain number of cards. You play tricks as normal. If you know trick-taking games, someone leads with like, you know, a card. You have to follow suit. If you cannot suit, you can break suit. And if you play one of the trump cards... Uh, then the, that that'll win you the trick. So the game starts with I think it's bananas. Um, the donkey starts on the banana. So currently the bananas are the trump card. If you play bananas, if someone leaves like say with um, the lonzones, and then someone comes out, I don't have any bananas or I don't have any lonzones in my hand. I have to play a banana, and it just happens to be a higher card. But even if it's a lower, that still trumps that one you would win that trick. So you're going to put that face down. You get points at the end of the round for having won tricks. You also get points. You have an option. This is really neat. You may decide instead of um, playing to this thing. So let's say I played uh, the 10 pineapple. You have the choice. You can, If you have the pineapple, you follow suit. But, or you can take your little seller and place it on that um, the lead suit. So in this case, you can put your seller on the pineapples, which are here. So it's a little area con uh, majority as well. At the end of the round, you're going to look, you're going to play through all your cards. You're going to get points per trick that you want. I think it's like two points per. But then you're also getting our points on who has the majority on each fruit. Okay. So it's a really nice mix of trick taking and area control. Uh, this is Filipino fruit market, uh, Tindeha, Tindehan. Uh, there are actually two of them. There's this one in Bastos. I haven't played Bastos yet, but this one is like uh, the reviews say this is the better of the two games. Um, but yeah, th this one's a lot of fun. I played with To Live and Dice in LA years ago, now I think about it. Um, but if you can track down a copy, I believe there's a company in Korea that has it has a better uh, has better art to it. Like this is to me, this is like very clip arty, and this might be like the publishers. I actually requested this directly from the publisher for an article I was writing years ago. And I think this, I don't know, if, I don't think this is a prototype, but it's like one step up from it. But it's totally playable. It's fun. Um, but I know there's a Korean company that public, I think it was still called Filipino Fruit Market, but um, they use like way cuter art and it might be out of print. But um, honestly, you could totally just make your own copy. There's really, as long as you have a couple of suits and just cards one through 10, I mean, you could even play with a standard deck of cards. All you would need are meeples. For the different uh, Trump suits here. Uh, Joel, yeah, Joel, you need to get this, brother. Yeah, this this one's fun. Uh, looks better than Point Salad. Uh, this is totally different than Point Salad. But, um, you know, Point Salad is like that push your luck um, drafting game. This is a, uh, at its heart, it's a trick-taking game. Um, let's see, I got the Pandemic 10th. And, ooh! Doug got the uh, cool first. Yeah, that looks amazing. Sucker for a cool box. So am I. I want to play that game. Love Point Salad. I do too. Point Salad is fantastic. Tried Q-Birds on B. I've not played that one yet. This game would be a great companion of Point Salad. No, is Q-Birds good? Need to get this. I liked it so much about it. Physical. Oh, cool. So what is that Q-Birds? I don't have to look into that one. Uh, but anyways, this is um, Filipino Fruit Market. Find it on BGA. I, for uh, for years, I was looking for it on um, BGA. No one sold it like used or anything. And I was fortunate um, at the time I, I wrote an article about, I think it was like small box games or trick taking games or something. And I reached out to the publisher and he had a copy. I had him ship it all the way from, I think the publisher lives like in Germany or something. But it took a little while to get here, but thankfully I, I have a copy now. Um, I would like to track down that Korean version and, you know, get the cuter art. Uh, but yeah, super, super uh, fun uh, trick taking game. But, hey, friends, that is it. Thank you for joining me uh, this morning. Oh, hi, uh, Fidelia. Thank you for joining us. I just saw you on here. Um, talking about Q 
two birds. I'll have to look into that. It says best with two more is two luck swinging. Okay, I'm okay with some luck in my games. Um, that is it, friends. Today, what we've done, we have uh, played Your Town from Graphic Novel Adventures, or the Graphic Novel Adventure from Van Ryder Games. Uh, they are currently kickstarting their new series of Graphic Novel Adventures. You can see the link right there that I just dropped in chat. Check that out. They're selling all the old books as well as the new ones. Um, I had a lot of fun with this one. It's like choose your adventure, but more gamery. Um, so you're building a town in that one in, front, in the Old West. Really, really cool game. Also, I've done this new segment that I'd like to do from occasion uh, on occasion is what's in the box or what's in yeah what's in the box. Uh, this was the quiver bolt that I had, and I just shared what games I had in it. Um, I'll do that you know from time to time because I do like to change games in them, and we'll share those. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank you for starting your Friday or ending your Friday or whatever day time zone you're in. Time has no meaning these days. Wherever you are, welcome. Thank you and uh, for hanging out with me. I hope you all have a great weekend. Don't forget, this weekend is Tabletop Live Network. Uh, 24 hours straight of a lot of cool uh, Twitch streamers playing a bunch of games. It's um, We have a premier sponsor for this event. It's Keymaster Games. They just released the game Trails, which is a standalone like sort of sequel to Parks, another great game. Um, and Michelle and I are going to be on, we're going to be on Sunday morning, a uh, new shift for us. We're going to be playing Sheepy Time from AEG. I thought I had it here. It's in the other room. Uh, at Sheepy Time, um, we're going to be giving away a copy too. So that's Sunday morning, but there's all kinds of great stuff. Please check out the link there for the, um, schedule. Uh, let me see. Oh, if you haven't already, please join our discord. Let's hang out. We talk games offline there. We post pictures. I'm going to post a picture of uh, the bolt and how it looks. Um, uh, with the games in, I'll post a picture there. Please share the games that are in your bag, whether it's the little bolt, the bigger bags, or whatever. Love to see what y'all are playing. Um, play some great games this weekend, everybody. We're going to raid uh, the Brothers Murph. Let me go over here to my Twitch window. We're going to raid. And uh, there are the brothers. Uh, oh, uh, they are playing Raft. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Joel, for uh, joining. Appreciate it, Mom Gamer 101. Always good to see y'all here. James, Slackfish. Uh, Argus, um, uh, Doug, uh, Fidelia, um, I'm just shouting out whoever I see, Dr. Three Putt, to live in nice in LA. Much love to you all. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to raid the Brothers Murph. Have a great weekend. Join us for TLN. See you next time. And be safe, be kind to each other, and play some games. Bye, everybody.